So Zena, we've talked about four key areas in our quality system. It's quality and design with our suppliers, with manufacturing and customer service. So let's look at the first of those four areas, which is quality and design. So quality really does start with design. It's about capturing customer requirements, converting those into a specification, and then making sure that we're capturing what we call CTQs, or critical to quality requirements within that specification also. And we have to make sure that we're accommodating for ease of manufacture and ease of service in the field. So let's go and meet the team who can show us what quality and design means to them. Okay, I'm excited to meet them. Hi Chris, I'm, uh, I'm showing Zainab around the business today and we're focusing on design. So what could you tell us about quality and design? Well hi Darren, hi Zainab, nice to meet you and welcome to the lab area Thank here. You. So I can tell you a lot about quality and design. We do quite a lot here in the business. Um, you can see, for example, we have a lot of equipment here where we make a range of different oil samples to prepare and to test in advance of some of the features that we put into the products for our customers. One of the really key things here is that we have a very diverse team. So we have a range of scientists, so we have chemists and physicists who work here, and engineers with a range of design skill set, electrical and mechanical hardware design. So really for us, quality comes at the core of the work that all of those team members will, will do day to day. And really, uh, if we take an example of, of where we start to create, I think create new features for products, one of the things we always want to do is make sure that it meets the customer expectations. So we need to understand when they're measuring oil samples or when they're running scientific measurements, what do they expect to see from their devices. That's why we have all the reference equipment here, like our, our GC, like our, our laboratory areas with the fume hood, and all of our products that we also have for, yeah. for testing here. So can I see an example of this? Yeah, really great example with the products that we have here, the DTA 900. For example, we have a feature that the team developed within the last couple of years, mm -hmm. which is really looking at our customer needs, where they want the best and fastest response for something that's happening in the substation transformer. So as you'll know, we measure the gases that are in the oil. For our customers, it's really important. If something is happening, they want to know quickly. So we've developed some new features which allow us to do a measurement as fast as about 30 minutes. Now that's market leading. You can take a sample from the transformer, take it into one of our gas analyzers, and make an assessment very quickly. But for us to do that, we had to come up with the concept of how to operate it, mm -hmm. and we had to develop and verify here that it worked. So that's where the team comes in. We developed some oil samples, we set them up on the device, and we tested and we verified that this would be a very fast response, and it would give the performance that the customer would require. So from that point, we can then consider how do we take that into a product now that we've demonstrated in the lab. So, as you said, from a concept, how do you take that into a new product? It's, and again, that's a really good question because it's not just a case of demonstrating it as a one-off in the laboratory. We have to basically check that there are no additional risks when you start to put this performance in the field at a substation. And also the design, we look at the different aspects of hardware and software. So that, that particular example, we took the concept of how it's going to operate. We would have reviewed that with a range of the team who have the right skills, so the design engineers, the chief engineer's office would also review as part of our new product process, and then we look for any possible risks and retire those. So using processes like FMEA, or failure modes effect analysis, that allows us to look for potential right. risks, but also look for the best way to implement this to meet the end requirements for our customers. So everything right down to what button should they press when they want to operate this feature, that had to all be very carefully scoped out reviewed with our customers and then we get that out to the field. So there's a lot involved after the guys have a fun afternoon here and we work out the idea, there's a lot involved still to take that to the customers. Right, okay. You can see, Zainab, we use technology to not only improve our existing product, but also develop new ones. Can I see something you're working on? So in terms of new R&D, what I've shown you here, some of our existing products, but we do continue to have, of course, lots of new innovative R&D in our dark room in our optics lab, uh, but that at the minute is top secret. So that's oh. something for future. <laughs> it may be a future exciting uh, product on the way. So you'll just have to keep an eye out for the products that have been released from GE. Well, I, just, I guess I just have to wait for that then. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you very okay. much, Chris. Thank you. You're welcome. So Zainab, as part of quality and design, the engineers first produce 
uh, prototypes of the concepts that they're developing, they can actually produce these by 3D printing them. And this allows us to do initial um, feasibility testing, uh, both very quickly and at low cost. This is Corey, and Corey can show us what, what I'm talking about. Hello. Hi Corey. So can I see a 3D CAD design of something you're currently working on? Yes, of course. Um, this is the new design I'm working on. Um, it's a sensor casing. Wow, and you can physically print this in 3D? Uh, yes, so we can print this in 3D. Um, let's check it out. Sure. So we are currently printing a CAD model of the case that I have shown you earlier. Here is an example of that printed version. It's so good that you can print this quickly. What do you do with this prototype? We can use the prototype printed model to check its fitment and functionality in the assembly. We can also use it in some cases for uh, testing, basic feasibility testing. We're currently thinking about the idea of what material to use for that case uh, and looks like it's going to be aluminium. And here is an example of that part. Oh, thank you. Okay, thanks Corey. So you've seen how we use uh, rapid prototyping, uh, how the mechanical engineers use that for their, for their testing. We do a similar thing with the electrical engineers and they also do rapid prototyping for, for PCBs. Um, thanks Corey. We're now going to move to uh, Kira to see about firmware. So this is Kira. Hi guys. So Kira works uh, with the, uh, the PGA firmware. So what do you do here and how does that link to continuous improvement? So I work with all aspects of the team, from mechanical design, from uh, electrical design to the manufacturing team, to implement any changes they've developed in our, uh, to improve our quality um, okay. and our products so that they can benefit in the field. Great. Right. Thank you very much, Kira. No worries. Thank you. So Darren, how do you know that new designs will perform as you expect? Well, we do that through validation testing. Validation testing is a really key part of the development process. Can I see some of the tests you conduct here at GE? Yeah, let's have a look at some uh, thermal and humidity testing. So Zainab, this is our oven. Our products are installed right throughout the world in all the various different regions and have to withstand the various environments from the northern coals of Canada to the tropics of Vietnam. And you can replicate those conditions in this oven? Yeah, we have to test from plus 55 degrees centigrade right down to minus 40 degrees. Oh wow, that's so cool. Get it? <laughs> okay, what else can we look at then, testing wise? So now we're going to take a drive to Galway, where we have a special test house that does various testing for us. Okay, cool. So Zainab, we brought you to Steris Galway. They're an independent test lab. And we work with them to perform a number of different tests vibration testing, ingress protection testing, thermal testing and so on. This is Adele. Adele is going to show us around today. Welcome to Steris Galway. We are an ISO 17025 accredited test laboratory. We provide environmental and reliability testing on our products and electronic components for customers. And the idea is that we test the um, intended life cycle out in the real environment. Sounds good. Let's go. Can we go and have a look? Yes. Zainab and Darren, this is our vibration tester. Here we simulate uh, the vibration profile that GE products will be exposed to when they're connected to a transformer. The vibration testing is in relation to the international standard. I'm really excited to see the test in um, action. However, um, what's the point of doing this test? Well Zainab, as Adele mentioned, a transformer will expose the units to a certain amount of vibration. So we want to make sure that when that's happening that none of the components are coming loose and that the product continues to perform as expected and be able to continue to measure. After vibration testing that we would do here, we would, we would then take it back to the GE facility and we would make sure it's functionally performing as expected through further testing. What we can also do here is, uh, is simulate the type of vibration that the unit would be exposed to when it's being transported to the site or transported to the customer and still make sure that it performs as expected. That's great, that's great, I understand. Shall we see how it works? Yeah, yes, absolutely. So, what's next? Have you brought your rain jackets? We'll have a look at some IP testing. What's IP testing? So, IP stands for Ingress Protection Testing. So, for yourselves, GE are under a standard for IP56, 
And what that right. means is your product must withstand high volumes of water hitting the units through power jets. Sounds good, let's take a look. So Zena, this is a really important test for our customers, obviously as well as rainwater getting on their units. It's important that we are making sure that if our customers are power hosing their, uh, their assets, that the water's not getting inside of our unit. It makes sense. That's a lot. How much water is that? That's 100 litres per minute. Wow. It's impressive, isn't it? That's crazy. Ah, so this is the pallet incline impact test. So as you know, when our products are being transported in the packaging, they also have to withstand the various thumps and bumps that they'll come across and then they're being transported to the, their destination. Yeah, so this simulates uh, impacts and shocks commonly found within the distribution environment. For example, a forklift lifting a pallet. Yeah. Um, for GE, the, this is done as part of a test series under a FedEx standard. Right. Okay, so the headphones. Yeah, so will we take a step back and we'll pop our air protection on and have okay. a look. Let's go. Thank you so much for visiting us today. Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank much, Adele. Bye bye. See you later. So, on to the next test. On to the next test. So Zainab, I've brought you to an anechoic chamber, we're just outside of Dublin. Anechoic, uh, that means no sound comes in or out, right? Kind of like a silent room? Well, sort of, but we've got John okay. McCauley here. John is the owner of Compliance Engineering Ireland and he can tell us a little bit more about it. Okay. Yeah, this is a, an anechoic chamber, except that it's a radio frequency anechoic mm -hmm. chamber. So it's a similar function. Um, okay, so what tests do we conduct um, here on the GE products? So here we do EMC testing. Uh, and that's to ensure that your product complies with European and international regulations. Okay, nice. Um, so what, what's EMC exactly? So e EMC stands for electromagnetic compatibility. Um, electromagnetic compatibility means that the product doesn't produce excessive levels of radio frequency interference and isn't susceptible to external interference. Okay, um, so that's what the cones here are for, or what do they do in this room? So what the, the cones are absorbers. Uh, this is a shielded room mm -hmm. to keep out background radio frequency signals and to prevent reflections off the walls, we have uh, the cones which are absorbers and they stop uh, signals going to the side, which means that we're only measuring the direct signal from your product to the antenna. Right, okay, and the antenna. Um, what does the antenna do? So the, the antenna uh, sort of simulates your radio or TV uh, and it measures the radio frequency emissions mm -hmm. from your product and we connect the antenna to um, a measuring receiver which is like a spectrum analyzer and we uh, ensure that the emissions in the product stay below the limit line. So as long as the emissions in the product are below the limit line it comp complies with the European and international standards. Thank you so much for your time today. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks, John. So, Zainab, that's EMC testing. So, what's this? So, this is the M&D Reliability Test Centre. Should we have a look inside? Yeah, let's check it out. So, Zainab, we have a real focus on reliability and GE has put a lot of investment into this reliability test centre. We have a high quantity of units undergoing thousands of hours of accelerated testing. That's so cool. Yeah, it allows us to really confirm the confidence in what we're shipping to our customers. So Zainab, that's quality and design. It's about getting customer requirements. It's about then getting those into a specification, making sure that we've captured the critical to quality items in, in there. It's about developing concepts, using tools such as uh, rapid prototyping so that we can do initial feasibility. It's about the rigorous testing that you've seen that we do. And then it's about running thousands of hours of reliability testing. It's honestly been so cool to see all of this and I'm very excited to see what's next. Great.